Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at and solving the five hardest ever maths GCSE questions. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So for our first question, the diagram shows a container for grain. The container is a cylinder on top of a cone. The cylinder has a radius of 3 meters and a height of 8 meters. The cone has a base radius of 3 meters and a vertical height of 4 meters. The container is empty and is then filled with grain at a constant rate. After 5 hours, the depth of the grain is 6 meters above the vertex of the cone, and after 9 hours, it is 4. Work out the value of h. So we start by noting that after 5 hours, the depth of the grain is 6 meters above the vertex of the cone. And since the height of the cone is 4 meters, this means that the cone must be completely filled with grain, and the grain in the cylinder must have a depth of 2 meters. So we can use this to calculate the volume of grain after 5 hours. So in order to do this, we know that the volume of a cone is a third pi r squared h. And here we know that the radius is 3 meters and the height is 4 meters. So we can write this as a third pi times 9 times 4, which is going to be 12 pi. And to calculate the volume of grain in the cylinder, we know that the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So we've got a radius of 3 and a height of 2. So this is going to be pi times by 9 times by 2. So it's going to be 18 pi. So overall, after 5 hours, we've got 12 pi plus 18 pi of grain. So we've got 30 pi. And we're also told that after 9 hours, the container is full. So this means the volume of grain after 9 hours is going to be the volume of the cone plus the entire volume of the cylinder. And we already figured out the volume of the cone. We figured that was 12 pi. And in order to find the volume of the cylinder, well, we know that the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, and the radius is 3, but this time we need to use height h. So this is going to be 9 pi h. And we're also told that the container is filled with grain at a constant rate. So what this means is that the volume of grain after 5 hours must be 5 ninth of the volume of grain after 9 hours. So this means we can write 12 pi plus 9 pi h times by 5 ninth is equal to 30 pi. Now tidying this up a little bit, we get 4 pi over 3 plus pi h multiplied by 5 is equal to 30 pi. Now we can divide both sides by 5 to get 4 pi over 3 plus pi h equals 6 pi. And now rearranging for pi h gives us pi h is equal to 14 pi over 3. Dividing both sides of our equation by pi, we get h is equal to 14 over 3. So moving on to our next question. Paul has eight cards, each of which is numbered. Paul takes three of them at random and adds the numbers on the cards to get a total t. Work out the probability that t is odd. So we know that we can either get an odd number or an even number. So therefore, the probability that t is even plus the probability that t is odd must be equal to one. And rearranging gives us that the probability that t is odd is equal to one minus the probability that t is even. So in order to solve this problem, if we figure out the probability that t is even, we can then use this to figure out the probability that t is odd. So whenever we add two numbers, in order to obtain an even result, we can either be adding an even plus an even, or an odd plus an odd. So breaking this down a little bit, in order to get an odd number from two numbers, we need to have an even plus an odd. And in order to get an even, we could either have an odd plus an odd, or an even plus an even. So combining this gives us two possibilities where t is even. We either have an even plus an even plus an even, or we have an even plus an odd plus an odd. However, we only have two even numbers, two and four, so we can rule out this possibility. So, so now we only have to consider the possibility where we have two odds and one even. So the probability of getting an even on our first try, well, we've got two evens and eight overall numbers, so that's going to be two over eight. And then now we only have seven numbers because we've already picked one. And we've got six of these being odd. So the probability of achieving an odd is six over seven. And now the probability of achieving another odd will be five over six. Now multiplying this out, crossing out the sixes, we get 10 over 56 or five over 28. However, we notice that the even could be at three possible positions. If we label these one, two, and three, the even could either be the first one to be picked the second one to be picked, or the third one to be picked. So we need to multiply this by 3. 
So this gives us 15 over 28, the probability that t is even. And well, remember we said the probability that t is odd is equal to 1 minus the probability that t is even. So the probability that t is odd is 1 minus 15 over 28. So the probability that t is odd must be 13 over 28. So now for our third question, ABC and ACD are triangles and K is a constant. Show that the vector CD is equal to 6A plus 4.5B. Well, this first part is fairly straightforward. We notice that CD could be written as the vector CA plus the vector AD or minus AC plus AD. Well, we know that AC is 3B, so that's going to be minus 3B plus 6A plus 7.5B, which is just 6A plus 4.5b. So now moving on to the next part, BCD is a straight line, work out the value of k. So since BCD is a straight line, BC is parallel to CD. And whenever two vectors are parallel, we know that one must be a multiple of the other. So we can write the vector BC as lambda of CD, where lambda is just a constant. Well, we know from the first part that CD is 6a plus 4.5b. So we can write BC as lambda of 6a plus 4.5b. For the left-hand side of the, the equation, bc is going to be ba plus ac, which clearly is just ka plus 3b. So expanding out, we get 6 lambda a plus 4.5 lambda b. So on the left-hand side of the equation, we've got k a's and 6 lambda a's on the right-hand side. So therefore, we can conclude that k must be equal to 6 lambda. And similarly, we've got 3 b's on the left-hand side and 4.5 lambda b's on the right-hand side. So therefore, 3 must be equal to 4.5 lambda. So numbering these two equations, 1 and 2. From 2, we clearly have that lambda is equal to 3 over 4.5, or 2 thirds. Now substituting this back into 1, we get k is equal to 6 times 2 thirds, or k is equal to 4. So for a fourth question, we've got another vector question, with this one being slightly more challenging. So OAN, OMB, and APB are straight lines, and AN is 2 times OA. M is the midpoint of OB. The vector OA is A, and the vector OB is B. And we're given that the vector AB is equal to K times the vector AB. Given that MPN is a straight line, find the value of K. So firstly, let's label the information that we've been given. And since M is the midpoint of OB, I'm going to write both OM and MB as a half B. And we're also given that the vector AP is k times the vector AB, and the vector AB is the vector AO plus the vector OB, or we can rewrite that as minus OA plus OB, which is minus A plus B. So therefore, AP must be k times minus A plus B. And we'll write that in. And what this also tells us is that PB must be 1 minus k times minus A plus B. So similar to the last question, we're given that MPN is a straight line. So therefore, MP is parallel to PN. And the vector MP is just going to be the vector MO plus OA plus AP, which we'll rewrite as minus OM plus OA plus AP. And this is going to be minus a half B plus A plus K times minus A plus B. And now just rewriting this slightly differently. We have one minus K A's and K minus a half B's. And PN, we'll write this as the vector PA plus AN, or in other words, minus AP plus AN. Minus AP is minus K minus A plus B. And AN is 2A. And then rewriting this slightly differently, we have 2 plus K A's. Well, since MP is parallel to PN, we can write the vector MP as some factor of PN. We call it lambda. So then we have 1 minus k a's plus k minus a half b's is equal to lambda times 2 plus k a's minus k b. And then expanding out that right hand side of the equation, we've got 2 lambda plus lambda k a minus lambda k b. So similar to the last question, we look at how many a's we've got on the left-hand side. We've got 1 minus k, and on the right-hand side, we've got 2 lambda plus lambda k. So therefore, we can write 1 minus k is equal to 2 lambda 
plus lambda k. And similarly for b, we've got k minus a half b is on the left and lambda k b is on the right. So we can write k minus a half is equal to minus lambda k. So let's label these equations 1 and 2. So now adding our two equations, we get a half is equal to 2 lambda, or lambda is equal to a quarter. And now substituting that back into equation 2, we get k minus a half is equal to minus k over 4. Rearranging this gives us 5 over 4k is equal to half. So therefore, k must be equal to 2 fifths. So now for our final question, the hardest ever question in a maths GCSE paper. The diagram is made of three circles, each of which has radius 4 centimetres. The centre of the circles are A, B and C such that A, B, C is a straight line. And work out the total area of the shaded region. So in order to do that, we're actually going to figure out the area of this circle. Um, and we're going to subtract from that the area of these smaller sections. So we'll start by labelling these four points. We'll label them D, E, F and G. Then we're going to draw lines connecting A, B and C to these four points. And what we can notice is that each of these lines has length 4 centimetres, since each circle has radius 4 centimetres and each line is a radius of one of the three circles. So what this tells us is that each triangle must be equilateral, and that means that each of the angles in each triangle must also be 60 degrees. So to find out the area of the triangles, that's quite straightforward. But what's slightly more difficult is to find these areas here. And clearly there are eight of them, and each one is identical. So we could just figure out the area of one and multiply it by eight. So in order to do this, we're going to first find the area of this sector here. And we're going to subtract from that the area of this triangle. So the area of sector A, G, B is going to be the area of the circle, which is 16 pi, because r is 4, times by 60 over 360, or in other words, 16 pi times a sixth, which is 8 pi over 3. And then from this, we need to subtract the area of the triangle. So it's an equilateral triangle with side length 4, so we can use the formula s squared root 3 over 4, where s is the side length. The side length is 4, so we've got 16 root 3 over 4, which is just 4 root 3. So like we said, we'll subtract this from the area of the sectors. We've got 8 pi over 3 minus 4 root 3. And we need to multiply this all by 8, because like we indicated before, there are 8 of these sections. So this is going to give us 64 pi over 3 minus 32 root 3. So to this, we need to add the area of the four equilateral triangles. Like we said, each one has an area of 4 root 3, so we can multiply this by 4 to get the area of the four equilateral triangles being 16 root 3. So we've got 64 pi over 3 minus 32 root 3 plus 16 root 3 equals 64 pi over 3 minus 16 root 3. So that's the area of these um, sections. So we need to subtract that from the area of this whole circle, which has radius 4. So the area of it must be 16 pi. And we're subtracting this from it. And this gives us 16 root 3 minus 16 pi over 3. So those were the five hardest maths GCSE questions. Don't worry if you struggled with them. These are meant to be challenging. However, if you do have any questions about how I solved them, please do leave a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe and share it to a friend.